This is a very famous quote. You've probably seen it before. It's by Ben Bernanke before he became chairman of the Federal Reserve. The US government has a technology called a printing press, or today it's electronic equivalent, that allows it to produce as many US dollars as it wishes at no cost. Now, like most things that come from central bankers, this is actually not the whole story. This is really a half-truth. There may be no cost to the US government, but there's a real cost to everybody who holds dollars in terms of the lost purchasing power if they run the printing press. One of the things I was looking at in quite detail today was at the Bundesbank Money Museum was the period of, of Weimar Germany and what Rudolf Havenstein, who was the president of the Reichsbank, was doing. And one of the observations that they made at the museum is that he was afraid to stop printing because he feared economic uh, chaos, economic and political chaos. But the, the irony is, is that by printing, he actually ushered in economic and political chaos. Um, what's happening today at the ECB is essentially the same thing that happened back in Weimar in 1923. You know, Mr. Trichet was saying, I'm not going to buy government bonds, I'm not going to buy government bonds, I'm not going to buy government bonds. They had the crisis meeting. He says, oh, by the way, I'm going to buy government bonds. That's what Mr. Havenstein essentially did. Mr. Trichet probably feels the same way that Mr. Havenstein did, that he's afraid to not print, because if he prints, he's worried about economic chaos. But if he does print and does not recognize the realities of the monetary system today, you're going to collapse the euro just as surely as you collapse the Deutschmark, or excuse me, the Reichsmark, or just as surely as the US dollar is ultimately going to collapse. Because what central banks around the world are doing is what Mr. Bernanke is saying. Now, economies are different. Weimar Germany, very few people had a bank account. Almost all commerce was conducted in terms of cash currency. Even the government at the end of the month would pay everybody with a packet of Reichsmark notes. Uh, because nobody had a bank account, just like Zimbabwe today. Argentina in 1991 had a very sophisticated banking system, but they too had hyperinflation. What happened there is that the government bought bond, excuse me, the central bank bought government bonds, turned them into deposit currency by creating Argentine australs, which it put into the government's checking account, and the government then wrote checks. And you had hyperinflation that way. That's what the US government is facing. It's hyperinflation like it was in Argentina. And with the decision by the ECB to monetize government bonds, I think the euro is also facing a threat of hyperinflation. And I'm going to explain why in a minute. But before I do that, let me show you this little chart about quantitative easing, which is essentially another word for buying government paper and turning it into currency. This is the S&P 500 index going back to the beginning of 2009. And you can see the, the low that was reached in March of 2009. And what I'm going to lay across this now is the amount of government paper that the US government was selling to the Federal Reserve. In other words, what the Federal Reserve was buying and turning into currency. At the low in the market, the Federal Reserve announced that it was going to begin this process of quantitative easing, buying government bonds, US government bonds, and turning them into currency. Now look at the correlation between the rise in the stock market and the building up of the assets and the balance sheet of the, of the Federal Reserve. It bought just over, almost two, two trillion of dollar assets and basically the stock market went up by essentially the same amount. This little dip here is when the uh, Federal Reserve said that they're gonna end quantitative easing and nobody believed them so the stock market had rallied. But Here's when they actually end, ended quantitative easing, and look what's happened since. This whole rise in the stock market, and again, keep in mind that previous chart that I showed you about how markets around the world are interlinked. This whole rise in the stock market since the March, nine, uh, March 2009 lows, this is not because of good economic conditions. Stocks have been going up because the printing presses and the, and the bookkeeping units of account for the electronic currency that Mr. Bernanke was referring to, they're running full, full steam ahead. And all of this money has to go somewhere. Sure, some of it's going to go into gold and some of it's going to go into silver because people understand that that's a good way of protecting your wealth when money is being debased by the central bank. But a lot of it is going to go into the equities of mining companies equities of companies that are near tangible assets. 
When you own an equity of a mining company or a commodity producer or an oil company, it's almost like owning a tangible asset. So if you look at the onset of hyperinflation, one of the sure signs is that the stock market is going up. Now we've reached an important crossroads here. Is the Federal Reserve true to its word and not going to do any more quantitative easing, or are they going to do what the ECB just announced and start buying government bonds? Are they going to do what Mr. Havenstein did back in 1923 and said he was afraid to stop printing because of the economic conditions and possible economic collapse that would uh, occur if he stopped printing? I think the U.S. government, the Federal Reserve, is going to start announcing again quantitative easing. And if they do, that's really going to put all national currencies on the road to debasement.